Hello guys, Winston here. Sorry for the gap in videos, I've been going down a really deep rabbit hole for the latest Carbide 3D project series, which if you haven't already checked out, you should. But I wanted to share a quick follow-up project to my monitor stand that I made a couple months ago. If you recall the way I machined these frames for the stand, there were a series of interlocking C-shapes, and nestled within those cut frames was a piece of stock I wasn't sure I would have any use for. Since I ended up with a couple of them, I decided to keep them around and glue them up to form a slightly more useful block of stock. And from this piece, I figured I could make a little tray to organize all the random junk that I keep on my desk because, unfortunately, Dell thought it would be a good idea to make the foot of their monitor convex, which makes it a fairly unstable shelf. So off to Fusion I went with some dimensional constraints from my monitor and my stock. I drew out a rectangular profile, partitioned it off into several compartments, and then liberally applied fillets. For tool pathing, I first needed to add my bull bit to the tool library. This can be programmed in as a bullnose end mill with a 3 quarter inch diameter, quarter inch corner radius, and 5 eighths inch flute length. And before you ask, I'm using this quarter inch shank bull and tray bit from Whiteside. Same company that makes my surfacing bit, so far their products have worked as expected and I have no complaints. Link will be in the description below. The first order of business toolpath wise is to face down my stock since I can't trust it to be perfectly flat and consistent. Next, I'll go through an adaptive roughing operation because I think well-regulated cutting forces are the greatest thing since sliced bread. And when it comes time to do the finishing, I'll use both 2D pocketing and 2D contours to clean up the inside of my tray. Since I modeled in a fillet at the bottom of my tray to match my bull bit's corner radius, the 2D contour should fit into that corner just fine. Then I'll switch to a quarter inch end mill to cut out the tray's outer profile, and then a quarter inch ball nose end mill to 3D contour the top edges since I'm not sure there's going to be enough wall height to run against a bearing on the router table. Seems simple? Well, that's because it is. But what if you wanted to machine something with a radius larger than the radius of your bowl bit? You know, like, maybe a bowl? Well, that's where you could apply 3D finishing toolpaths to machine a fillet of just about any radius. I would suggest a contour toolpath to hit the vertical walls, 2D or 3D, down to the depth of the bottom of the wall plus the radius of the bit and then throw in a scallop toolpath for the rest. But let's save that for a different video. Tray now, bowl later. Moving to the garage, my glued up stock has a very slight bow to it, so I'm using some tape in the corners and placing it concave down on my wasteboard. I'm using a one inch surfacing bit under manual control to deck off the top to get it flat. Then I can flip it over and be assured that it will sit evenly on the wasteboard. Since I'll be running a facing operation with my bowl bit, I can sub out the surfacing bit now. It's always faster to let the CNC do the work instead of jogging it by hand. First operation of my G-code brought the top edge of my tray to a known height. Then I roughed out my pockets and finished the internal floors and walls. Next, I switched out the bowl bit to cut out the outer profile of my tray and round over the top edges. I skipped using tabs here because I have plenty of surface area for double-sided tape to work its magic. After machining, there's still a bit of hand finishing to do. A router bit will always leave some swirl marks in the floor of a pocket, and if you can do a little sanding to hide them, it'll make the finished piece look much better. In the future, I might try a parallel finishing pass here, just so that the machining marks are better aligned with the grain of the wood and easier to hide. On the router table, I rounded over the outside edges in multiple step downs. I wanted to avoid burn marks and chip out, so I made sure my last pass was very shallow and constantly moving. To ensure that my tray matched my monitor stand, I applied several coats of satin spray poly, taking care to sand at 320 grit before the last coat. With so much exposed surface area, you really have to make sure that you take down the grain that's raised, otherwise it's never going to feel perfectly smooth. After a day to cure, I stuck some tape under the tray and slapped it under my monitor. Now I have the perfect place to dump SD cards and dongles. This was a really simple project that I found quite satisfying because not only does it make my life a little more organized, but I was able to recycle my scraps into something useful. And as an added bonus, because it's the same material as my monitor stand, the colors and appearance match perfectly. I want to thank you all very much for watching, and I'll be back eventually with more CNC projects and DIY nonsense.